Recording in progress. Are we good? Can I walk around? I got to stand one. Spot. You're 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 good to walk. Good evening, good evening, everybody. My name is Alan Graves. My call signs AG4VA. I was never a amateur radio contester until I met the uh, the Falk Care Club a couple years ago. I can get into their repeater from my um, shack on Clark Mountain in Ivy, and um, I joined their club and. I really think a whole lot of contesting in 2019. And then in 2020, I kind of supported them from the shack and just threw out a couple uh, QSOs every now and then when I heard the members on the air. And then 21, 22, and 23, the last three years, I've been mobile in the Virginia QSO, car QSO party, VHF only. And I've really enjoyed it. John invited me to come by and talk about contesting mobile this evening. I'd like to start with a couple pictures. When I encourage people to get started in mobile operations, I always like to encourage them to start with what's around your house. And I saw this on the internet the other day. I haven't used this yet in my car yet. It's a, uh, it's a plunger, it's a bathroom plunger with a wooden handle with a uh, smartphone strapped on. And I must say, if, uh, if that's all you had, that might work for mounting your gear and your vehicle. Hey, why not? I might recommend a clean one from Sam's Club, but hey, you know, suit yourself. And uh, some people go all out when it comes to mobile operations. My friend Gil went so far as to get a Mercedes diesel. There are some frequencies. I haven't experienced it yet doing VHF only. VHF only in the Virginia CUSA party is 50 meters, I'm sorry, six meters, two meters, um, 1.25 meters and 40 centimeters and all on up. They consider that VHF, but Gill's in a different category. And he got a Mercedes diesel to lessen whatever noise he experienced in his car while contesting and being a rover. I think for me personally, because you'll see in a minute, I just use a Honda Accord. If I'm experiencing a lot of noise on HF, because when I'm mobile in the Virginia CUSA party, I usually pull over and stop, pick my seat back a little so there's enough room between me and the steering wheel so I can log on my laptop while I'm pulled over the side of the road. I'm just gonna turn the car off and I'm gonna use my battery. So this is the extreme way of reducing the noise from your ignition. Mine's the cheap way by turning the car off. My own car is a Honda Accord and I took the headliner out and bored three holes in the roof and put in three NMO mounts. Now, if you ever want to have some fun, take a drill bit on the top of your car and just start drilling. It's a really good feeling. And if you've never experienced it, you should put it on your bucket list at least once in your life. And I got to experience it three times. So for my, my um, participation, I had the 220 band on this antenna. This antenna was two meters and 440, and I had six meters in the back. That's important to have those four antennas as I'll get to in a moment. Now I didn't mount, I didn't mount all my equipment in there on a permanent basis. This is temporary. I want my car to still have four passengers in there, four, four passenger capability Monday morning. And I want to basically still be able to drive in a parking garage if necessary Monday morning. So I cut a sheet of plywood. I'll show it a little better in another picture, but essentially in the driver's side, there's a sheet of plywood and there's some two by fours that come up with an angle 
just so I have a platform so I can attach all my rigs to it in the car. And the rig on the bottom was a Yaesu 857D. That gives me everything from 160 meters through 440. I've just used it for six meters and the CUSA party. I'll be using it for 40 meters this year. The uh, middle rig is an Alenco, um for 220. And the top rig was two meters and 440. So I had four bands over three antennas. Now, the one problem I ran into is that I also wanted to run APRS. I'll show you the tracker in a minute. And the best way for me to run APRS was to put my HT in the car. So that's the, um, I guess everybody here is a ham, but the, the handy talkie here was uh, what I was running APRS on. But I didn't want another antenna for APRS. The friggin' car already looks like a porcupine, and I didn't want to add to it. So I put in an AB switch here, and I used the top rig on the dual band antenna on the roof when I'm making QSOs. And then when I wanted to beacon out my position on the um, APRS network, I just switched manually so the HT had use of the antenna on the roof. Because that tiny stubby little rubber duck thing that comes with your radio really wasn't going to be enough to get out. So that was my setup for VHF only. And in the floorboard, let's see here. I think this one will do it. So in the floorboard, I suggest anybody that goes mobile take um, something like this. You can get this on Amazon. This is a uh, wire lead that hooks into your battery, 10 gauge wire, two 40 amp inline fuses, and it's got power pole connectors already, already uh, wired in. And I put this on my battery and then wired in an extension cord on power pole as well through the firewall into the wheel well of my car. And I came into one of these little boxes that allows you to plug in a whole bunch of power poles. So essentially I'm, essentially I'm powering this on the floor of my car. And this allows me to plug in a whole bunch of things on the floor. And um, I also had a inverter on the floor so I can get 220, I'm sorry, 120 to charge up my laptop periodically along the way. Not, uh, not all the time because the fan, <laughs> the fan on my inverter is loud, so I don't want it on all the time. So that's essentially my setup. I do... I did lean the seat back and I put in this desk. It's more just a place to hold things. And um, I'll be set up similar this year. This year, I'm just not, I'm not doing six meters this year. I'm gonna do HF. I'm still gonna do two meters and 440 and 220. So that's my basic setup in the car. If you, if you don't wanna go through your firewall, you can always put a mag mount on your roof you put a battery in the back seat, the back of your car on the floor, and you don't need all this setup. But I have found it very useful now that I have those NMO mounts on the roof. And I didn't have, I didn't have any smaller coax, so I used, <laughs> I used LMR 400. It's a devil of a turning radius in a tight place in a car. But um, that's what I had, so like a plunger, I didn't want any loss at all, and I doubt I have any, much, a little. Anyway, that's the method to my madness. Now, the, uh, the Virginia CUSA party, if anybody doesn't know, starts this weekend, March 16 and 17. Saturday, it runs from 10 a.m. to midnight, and then Sunday, it's 8 to 8, so you got... 20, was it 26 hours to operate this weekend? If anybody hasn't been to the QSO party website, a Google search 
will easily bring it up. And there are a couple things on here you want to know about. If you click on the official website, they got all the years in here. You can go back and look at their statistics and everything way, way back. The one we're primarily interested in is this year. And for mobiles, Andy, K1RA, has his tracker map available again this year. To use the APRS tracker, you just have to put VAQP in the message line to beacon out, and it will pick you up and put you on the map. My HT is running out in my car now, and it looks like it looks like the GPS hasn't picked up my hop from my house to um, to here. But the primarily primary thing that you're interested in with the mobile station is not so much their exact position. It's just that when you click on it, you want to know that they're now Mall County because we're we're interested in all the multipliers. There are 138 multipliers in Virginia. Multipliers are counties and independent cities. You want to try to work them all if you can. I don't think they've ever issued that award yet. They have an award if you work all 138, and the more you work, the more it helps your score. It's your points times your multipliers. The phone contacts in the QSIP party are a point. CW are two points, and if you contact a mobile, you get three points for the mobile. So you actually get you, you get more points working me than I get working you. So it's all those points times the multiplier. So rather than the actual exact position, you're really interested in what county your mobile is in. So I was confused. I read the rules. I've never done the Q cell party before, but I like it on the radio. Uh, I thought that so you're saying that a mobile when you're mobile, you only get a point unless you contact another mobile and you have three. That's, That's right. Okay. That's right. But you get how do the counties work for you if you activate a county? Isn't there a multiplier if you have so many QSOs? If, it, if I if I work a county like Albemarle, if I work you in Albemarle, yeah. I've got Albemarle as a multiplier. Right. But, but, but if it's if it's a very rare county like Lee County, way out in the pointy end of Virginia, which is rare, rarely activated, if I want to count that as a multiplier and I haven't worked anybody in Lee, I have to drive down there and work 10 people from that county. Okay, so that Only then can I count it as a multiplier as a mobile. So I'm, I'm far better off working somebody in Lee than driving there myself. So yeah. That, that, that was a little confusing. Though. Well, it's only two pages of the rules. So they don't over explain anything. <laughs> Are you the one who flew the coop? Yeah. You know, it's amazing how things work through the grapevine here in Charlottesville. I heard somebody was cooped up in this club and it's you. Well, here's the crazy part. I was on my HT. All I had was my HT because I was calling in for the Monday night information pad. And I realized that I was literally inside a steel cage on my HT. So I climbed my ladder to get up as high as I could to uh, check in. Who rescued you? What's that? Who rescued you? My wife. She loves you. I well, I was yeah, big she was pretty like a Cheshire cat. Any I wife that'll let her husband out of the coop is in love. <laughs> so maybe perhaps more importantly than the tracker, if this will come up, is the spotting network. And I just put some practice spots up there today. I didn't really even do it for this talk. I was just testing it out. You can go in and register, and you can put spots on there yourself. As you hear, members or know that members are moving around, and uh, you're welcome to spot me <laughs> if you want to. And I would keep an eye on this because the new rule this year is that you can self-spot. You couldn't spot yourself in the past, so that's a that's a new deal. People used to just text a friend and get the friend to spot them. Indirect spotting, you're not directly spotting, so that was kind of the old way around it. Now you don't need to get around it. You can just spot yourself. So um, keep an eye on that. That's available right at the top of the 
CUSO party website. And the other thing I want to show you is in their presentation. Now I'm not going to go over, I'm not going to go over all of it. Maybe it's best to pull it up from this website. So they have on here a pre bar a pre party briefing. And it goes on for more than a hundred pages. And I'm going to be, you know, with mercy, I'm not going to read every one to you this evening. I, I know you're disappointed. I'm actually just going to go to one slide on here. And, um, oh, you remember my friend Gil with the Mercedes diesel? I haven't, I haven't heard it straight from Gil yet, but somebody called the cops on him in a contest this spring because he was parked somewhere too long. I could probably do the same thing here if I pull up in front of Injik, the National Ground, whatever center with my car looking like a porcupine. I bet, we ought to bet, how many minutes would it take before the police come and, and um, knock on my door? What are you doing here? Um, anyway, I'm, I'm going to get the full story from him at some point, but uh, you, you may not want to dwell too long, make it cute so in sensitive areas if you're mobile. So I, I want to go down to slide 27 and talk just a little bit about strategy. If you are, yeah, they've got it in there. So if you're mobile in the Virginia CUSO party and you're only doing VHF, the best place you can go in the state of Virginia is either the Blue Ridge Parkway or the Skyline Drive. It's great to have the high ground if you're doing VHF. But having the high ground is only good if there are other people out there to talk to. So I talk to the, um, I talk to the folks in the Lynchburg Club. I talk to a lot of folks because I do summits on the air in Virginia. I'm, this, I'm the Virginia manager for Summits on the Air, and um, I'm on. I, I talk. I talk to all these clubs, and um, Lynchburg Club said they were big. Not nothing against Lynchburg Club, but probably miscommunication on my part. But they said they were big into the CUSO party. So I was in the blue in the on the Blue Ridge Parkway, which is south of Afton, thinking I would get a lot of two meter contacts down there. Really got nothing. Not much of anything at all. The real two meter activity or VHF, if you want to. If you want to work VHF and above six meters and up, go up into the central section of the Shenandoah National Park or further north, and you're going to get far more QSOs than you would going, going south. And that being the case, if you look at these statistics, it says here that K1HT, Rich is a, um, a good DXer, lives up in um, near um, uh, Warrington in the Falkir Club. His mobile three-point contacts were enhanced from just working so many in his shack. And part of that was mine. It doesn't say it here, and I'm not taking any credit for this. It's kind of hidden in the data. But I started working Rich probably in Nelson County, and Rich could work me on all four bands. So if there wasn't a lot of activity, Rich would just say, you want to run the band? Sure. We go six, we go six meters, two meters, 220, and 440 within about 90 seconds. And I give him four contacts. And I did that for Rich over at least, I haven't counted them up, but somewhere around 12 to 15 counties. So that was like, what, 48 times three points? times as multipliers, and I did that for a bunch of people in the Falkir Club. So you can really enhance your club score by going up on the, the Skyline Drive and um, swapping bands. They, in, in fact, in here, they have the, um, they have the information on um, how to win the CUSO party. Right? How to win the CUSA party. So read that over when you get a chance. Basically, it's band hop. Band hop as much as you can. Change bands and get as many multipliers as you can 
if you're working in your shack during the Virginia CUSO party and you think you're only going to be a fixed station, remember when you get in your car, if you drive to the grocery store, you're a mobile. So work people from your, your car. You can, you can enter two logs. Keep a fixed log for your house and have another log for the mobile. If you're, um, if you're doing the, like a multi-multi, multi-transmitter, multi-operator in a shack, remember when you walk out of that person's shack and get in your car, get out your HT. You're now a mobile. Work them on your HT in the shack to add points to your score. That's perfectly legal in the Virginia CUSO party. I was coming up the uh, Blue Ridge Parkway two years ago, and every time my car looks like a porcupine, and every time I pulled into a overlook, there was a guy that pulled in behind me or ahead of me. I thought, man, this is really strange. This is weird. It's like a stalker, you know? He didn't have any antennas on his car. So after this happened four or five times, I finally uh, just happenstance, uh, uh, coincidence, I decided I just got out of the car a minute, stretched my legs, and he pulled up beside me, rolled down his window, said, uh, are you tracking bears? <laughs> oh. And thinking back, I wish I'd said, no, Bigfoot, have you seen him? <laughs> but I wasn't thinking about it at the time. He almost seemed disappointed that I was in an uh, amateur radio CUSO party. But um, anyway, do we, do we have any questions about working mobile in the, in the CUSO party? You mentioned last year, you did 16 years, this year you're going to be doing What was... Your six meter experience last year. Pretty poor. Yeah. It just uh, it was an since I was doing VHF only, it fit the category to add some more QSOs in there. How so do you have any six meter at all? Yeah. Yeah, it was probably um 10, 10, 15 percent, maybe. Yeah. Now over time, the um with the enhancement, I guess with really the enhancement of the sunspot cycle, I'd probably attribute it to that. We all know it looked pretty much like a billiard ball a couple years back. And there's been a shift. You can look in the statistics in the CUSO party, and there's been a shift from 80 meters to 40. And I think at the same time, there, it seems like there was a shift from uh, VHF to HF as well. So... The last couple of years, I, I feel like I have, um, I don't know the right word for it, I feel like I've experienced the VHF only category enough. And uh, I, I won the category for the last three years. But the thing is, the first year I had the highest score. <laughs> and, the, and then instead of getting a better score each year, it's ticked down a bit. And I think some of that's the shift that we just don't have as many people participating in VHF as people have um, look towards HF is the sunspot cycle has allowed people to to use that more. So, yeah. They have got the statistics on all of that. Yeah. 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 It's in their presentation. Um, I think Albemarle is always been activated in the in the CUSA party, contacted in the in the CUSA party. We only had one participant and he passed away. And now we have John Porter who at least is in Charlottesville, right? Is there anybody else in Charlottesville? Ron in, in the city. Ron's in Charlottesville. Yeah. Yes, that's right. And he's doubled his score yeah. in the last in the three years in a row. He's the most improved. You again, Ron. But you're right, some of these counties or independent cities get overlooked. And if you go, if you go into, yeah, the official website, they have the announced operations. Here we go. So this is um, this is all the counties this year that people are planning on traveling to. And if you read down further, you'll see the email that went to Gordon NQ4K when they 
announce what they were going to do. So you see, there are still a lot of holes in there. Hey, and, Alan. Yeah. yeah. Mike W4MAF, good to see you. I wanted to uh, ask, is there a strategy when it comes to that? Because think about it, you and I are going mobile. A lot of the places I had planned three weeks ago, I don't even need to stop at, but I guess I will. Mike is going to contest with us in the uh, in the Green County team, on the Green County team this year. And I guess everybody knows in the room, the Green County Club has challenged the Albemarle Club, kind of a friendly friendly wager there's no bet i don't think we have any mobiles at all in our club that might, that might you're in a better situation game. chasing me because you get more points because yeah. i'm out there gathering up all the multipliers well mike's question was there is there any advantage and we've been strategizing a little bit in a couple different areas on this and the problem is just because there's a call signed by a county on the list. How do we know that person's actually going to wind up going there? Now, I don't doubt anybody in what they say they're going to do, but flat tires and extenuating circumstances, things can happen when you're going mobile in a CUSA party. So how do we double up that if we wanted to? Because I don't really want to drive. I see Lee... K2WPM claims he's going to be in Lee County. That's way in the pointy, pointy end of Virginia. I was just down there a couple of weeks ago doing running a uh, special event station on for summits on the air, and I stayed in the count, town of Norton, and that was 674 miles around trip for me, and I spent the night down there. And Lee County is still further. So, Mike, I don't know that I want to go down there and um, – cover these things. So I, I think we can only do the best we can. Mike and I have talked about maybe collecting all the club logs Saturday night and seeing what counties we need the next day. But do we drive to one of those counties because we don't have it yet? Or does somebody beat us there? How does that work out in the strategy? And I can't compile this because if I work as a mobile until midnight, I got to get a couple hours of sleep and be on the road at 8 a.m. in the morning. So I don't know that I have time to compile that from a strategy point of view. So if you guys have got a better strategy, let me know. I think you've strategized much more than we have. Okay. <laughs> there, there, there was a reason we asked him to come talk to us. Well, you, you might as well know, because I mean, at the end of the day, it comes to uh, Rich K1HT calls it BIC, button chair. Not to be crude, but it comes down to how many hours you're going to sit in your shack. I, I took it to mean button car. I think I got it wrong. But, um, you know, you got to make the contacts. So regardless of the strategy, and I think you were alluding to the fact that what if you miss the guy? What if the person is in Lee County, but that's the time I pull over the side of the road to get gasoline and he gets one QSO with the club or something, and he's maybe he's gone. You know, you got something, Larry? Yeah, Alan. Uh, you know, are the mobile operators just one person per car, or can you have a, a buddy that sits there and helps you uh, put in the input to the computer? You can make a team out of it. Does that add to your account or detract from it, or nothing? I think they just, you know, the QSO party has like 29 categories. So, and I think that's like considered a multi, you know, multi operator in the car versus a single operator in the car. And they do discourage folks from driving while operating. And I, I can't work a computer and, and talk on the radio and switch bands. And I drive a stick shift all at the same time. I, I've got to pull over and stop. But if you look at Matt, uh, anybody know Whiskey for Golf, Oscar? He has been, he's won like the mobile category the last, I don't know, number of years in the row. And um, he doesn't, um, when he's working voice, this is his route. 
Um, took him, it took Matt Whiskey Four Golf Oscar four years, four CUSA parties to cover every county and independent city in Virginia. So I guess that gives you each colored line is two days of the CUSA party. And each color is a different year. So that kind of gives you an idea of if you really want to score a lot of points. And I think last year, Matt scored about 380,000 points from his car by himself. So this kind of gives you an idea of um, <laughs> how big Virginia is and how long it would take you to get a lot of counties. Um, if you think about 26 hours and if you're, you know, if you're in each county an hour with driving time and operating time, you're 26, right? If you can do them in a half an hour, then double that. But that's that's kind of that's kind of the limits of what one person can do. But anyway, I, I want to mention logging. He uh, when he was doing phone, he didn't log while he was driving. He recorded everything. So he played the tape. He played 26 hours of the CUSO party back when he got home to write down all his logging. And I tried that the first year. And I found that after the CUSA party, it although it's it's fun to relive it, that's a lot of listening time to go back through and you gotta have a you gotta have a time stamp because you gotta get your time out of it and oh it's it's a it's a pain. And then when I was working a lot of um when I had some pileups in the Shenandoah National Park in the northern section. I had a hard time keeping up with dupes. Yeah. You know, I wasn't, my mind, my brain just doesn't, you know, after a while, I kind of leave the county and move to another one just because I didn't want to keep calling people I had already called. And they say, well, you just called me a minute ago. You're, it's a dupe, you know? That's one thing that the, the um, software helps you with. I use the logging software in 3 fjp It's like nine bucks a copy. And um, that software is excellent because it'll tell you right away if it's a dupe. Probably. Half of my dupes, I think, were errors. It was a dupe. I was like, oh, now I'm on 440. I need to, <laughs> I need to change bands. So it, it works for that as well. Go ahead, Bill. When he was reaching or approaching the county line, he always gave that person that refused to contact to say, hang on a second, I'll give you another one. So I like that. I like that. I've actually never had the, um, I, I guess I'd say privileged pleasure of listening to Matt in the CUSO party because while he was doing this the last couple of years, I was on VHF. But I understand some of his pileups are, are legendary. And that type of thing, I believe you only get a chance to do if you're logging on the fly by recording. It's a little tougher if you pull over the side of the road and you're like, well, I'm I'm 10 minutes from the county line. <laughs> if you time it right, I'll find a parking spot when I get there. So we also have to be really good at knowing exactly where the county lines are. There's not a lot of county lines in our country, so it's back roads. Yeah, for sure. He's a, uh, he's a talented operator. He's gone to CW. Uh, you can see his car was not majorly altered, you know? He takes that off on Monday morning and he can still fit it in the parking garage. And that's what I was trying to do with my car versus Gill and the Mercedes diesel. He's, <laughs> he's, he's got to park out somewhere where he's got some, uh, some headroom. But anyway, that's one method of logging. And yeah, there are other logging softwares like N1MM, I think that's free. Some of you probably are familiar with that, but uh, it's far more sophisticated than N3FJP. That particular software, they break it down just to what you need for the Virginia CUSO party. And at an eight, $9 price point, it's hard to go wrong with that. And then when you're ready to send your entry in, at the end, it writes a Cabrillo file for you, or Cabrillo, if it's you want to pronounce it closer to Spanish, but it, uh, it writes it for you. And then they have a portal on the CUSO party website that will go live right after the CUSO party. And um, you just upload it right, right to them. One thing I'd suggest when the, when the CUSO party's over Sunday evening at 8 p.m., don't send your login. 
John uh, Huggins, KX4O, has this thing with the Fauquier Club. He likes to praise the person that gets it because he's on the scoring committee, but he also contests and he's a member of the Fauquier Club. And uh, everybody in that club sends their logs to him to be checked with a second set of eyes before it goes to the actual scoring committee. And uh, I, think it was, yeah, I think it was last year. I thought I was pretty good at the end of the CUSA party because I got back to my house about seven and I drive into my yard because I got this great vista. I thought I'd look out at the view while I'm finishing up the CUSA party. That way, when eight o'clock gets here, I get out of my car and I walk in the house, right? I don't have any, I, I'm, I'm done driving. I'm still mobile, right? I'm in my car. Um, anyway, I sent my login before I got out of the car at like 8.05. And I get this email from John the next morning. Hey, I really want to commit to you for working the, the gigahertz band in the USA party. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait a minute. Anyway, I had a typo. So I did not win the first log to him that needed no corrections. So my point is, I would encourage you to take some time to look your log over and make sure you don't have any glaring errors because you've got until April 15th to get your log in. <laughs> you got a month. I don't know why it coincides with tax day, but, but it does. Shouldn't be hard to forget that way. But uh, I would take a little bit of time and just make sure everything's correct. Or if you're using a paper log, maybe that'll give you some time to type it in. You only have a couple contacts. Maybe convert it to a Cabrillo file and make the scoring committee's time a little bit easier because they've got like six, 700 logs to look at here. And you'll see on the website, you see that top line, uh, submit your log. And then after the, probably, bef I think before, but certainly after the 15th, they'll put out a list on there. It begins to populate everybody's log into the database. Go in there and check your log because you're not done yet. You want to make sure that your score is close to their, their score because they will rescore your log and what they say goes. But if you're 10,000 points difference, maybe you got a problem. If you're one QSO difference, maybe it's all right. I went and checked my log. The score looked uh, the same, but they had me in a different category. So I had to tell them I was actually VHF only and they corrected it. So you've got a lot of time to correct things. And then it's really not until about the end of May that they start sending the emails out to people who have won an award. They will make sure your name is spelled right. They'll send it out to the alcohol club because they'll want to make sure your winning club plaque has the right, right name and everything on it. And uh, then the award ceremony is up in Northern Virginia sometime June, July. So just because it's over... <laughs> Sunday. It's still a long time before we'll know how the Albemarle Club is done versus the Green County Club. But just so you know, Falk here, they've won the last number of years in a row, and I think it was somewhere around 2.2 .2 million points. So if you want to take how many people you think are going to contest in the Virginia CUSA party and divide it into that, then that's roughly how many points each of you have to come up with to beat Falk here one day. We're not looking to beat Falk here. We're looking to... It's astonishing, isn't it? But if, if we all... If we don't start at some point... Yeah. We'll, we'll never get there. And I've been looking in the records, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but I haven't seen a collective effort from the Albemarle Club. And I've never seen a record in there from the Green County Club. Nobody's ever entered a log. So we really don't know what the two clubs are going to do this year. This will be the Green County Club several Oh, you have? But a log wasn't entered in their name. Yeah, that's why I haven't been able, to, that's why I can't find it, is the thing. So this is a baseline year for both clubs, right? We don't really know. 
and we're just trying to encourage people to get on the air and have some fun with amateur radio. Uh, so before, not in the QSO party. Always been, always been mobile. Yeah. After I cut three holes in my roof, I was committed. I was committed to. I want to get my money out of those. <laughs> no, it's my it's my car. Yeah, people, people people are really worried about my resale value. I'm like, well, if I sell it to a ham, it's worth more. And I usually keep cars until they die on the side of the road. So you see a porcupine on the side of the road. <laughs> it's my car. Well, I think that's about the gist of what I've done in the QSA Party Mobile. I don't claim to be an expert, but this has worked for me. We have I'm curious to hear how HF compared to EHF for you. I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And Matt, Whiskey Four Golf Oscar is not going out this year the way he has in the past. Apparently he's, and it says so right in, well, you can read it in there. He's, um, he's watching the kids and his wife is contesting this year. Fixed from their home somewhere up in Orange, Culpeper area. So a real switch for that family. But he's got four kids. The youngest is about three, and the oldest has been doing some summits on the air activations with them. I think she's 11 or so. So I think we're going to see something interesting from that family in a couple of years when they're old enough to contest like Larry is saying, where dad can drive and the kids can sit in the car and talk on the microphone, drive dad crazy. He's probably going to want some headphones, not to listen to contacts, but to tune the kids out. Anyway, we have any other any other questions, Larry? When you're having uh, the uh, the NCFCC program, which I have also liked it very much, um, when you submit it, is there a limitation where we should register our club versus our individual call sites? Yeah, right in the file menu, you go down to submit final entry right i think is right cabrillo file it comes up with a little rectangular box and in there you can select your category and you can type in your your club yeah, you just uh we had there's, there's a club also in albemarle county i think in north carolina okay and that there is a certain way that we could put it in to count for virginia Versus North Carolina, mm -hmm. and you have to be careful about that. So that's one. Well, I think that's well, it, you know, but I'm not sure. I wonder. Well, that's, I'm well, I don't know, but as long as you guys standardize, and the scoring committee knows what you're, what you're using, you should be, you should be good. But you, you definitely don't want to. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. You know, we do need to agree on that. What we're going to put in there. Yeah, just so everybody's the same, that's what we're doing. I think we're going to be Green County, Virginia, and then ARC because they got six words <laughs> in their name, which is long. I think it'll fit in the box, but I think we need to shorten it down a little bit. Any other questions? Excuse me? Yeah, I don't. It 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 may be. I I don't know what they do when you go out of you go out of state. We've been so focused on in state, but they've got a guy in Europe who rent who wins a um a, a category each year. Yeah, yeah, he does a good job too. Yeah, remarkable. I'm sorry. No, that's like with your parks on the air. If they're if you're doing 20, you you can't work them. Yeah, yeah. But I think probably uh, 40 meters for HF 40 meters is going to be the the most popular band this year. Yeah, maybe so. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right. Oh.
Uh, I'll let you reject that. Ready. We need to have someone to pull the. Uh, and something else that I was reminded, I don't know how many of you saw the email that came 